Your new Stitchmaster sewing machine is now set up and it's ready to use. We recommend watching this entire use video to get the most out of your leather sewing machine. To engage the balance wheel, push the posi pin into any one of the three holes in the Power Plus wheel. Then rotate the balance wheel towards you until the posi pin sinks into a mating hole on the shaft's bushing. Now the sewing machine is engaged, we can lift the presser foot via the lever at the top of the machine and pull the sample out from underneath the presser foot. If the needle is buried in the leather, you may have to rotate the balance wheel towards you until the needle is out of the leather, then remove the leather sample. This Latigo leather sample was sewn after the Stitchmaster was built at the Sayerite facility. A short run of thread was left in the sewing machine to show proper threading. We will remove that. Don't worry, we'll cover threading shortly. It's more than likely that some thread is left on the bobbin from testing at the Sayerite facility. You can access the bobbin from this slide plate, or you can tilt the machine back to gain access to the bobbin. This is typically how most people do it. Lift the spring-loaded lever and pull the bobbin case out. With the lever held open, the bobbin is captive in the bobbin case. Release the lever and the bobbin will fall out. Even though there is thread still left on the bobbin from testing, we want to show you how to wind a new bobbin. We'll take one of the four bobbins and the cone of thread that comes with the Stitchmaster sewing machine. We'll take the cone of thread and place it on the spindle of the thread stand. Thread comes off the top of the cone and is passed through the thread stand arm then through the thread stand post. Now wrap it around the bobbin tensioner. Here's a top view and here's a side view doing the same. Then pass it through the pigtail as shown. Run the end of the thread under any other threads and to the bobbin winding spindle. Place a bobbin on the spindle or post then run the end of the thread through one of the top holes of the bobbin. Hold on to the thread tail briefly and power the machine. Be sure the posi pin clutch is disengaged to wind bobbins. We'll store the posi pin in the keeper. Push the bobbin spindle to the right to engage it. Power the machine while holding on to the tail. Make several revolutions, then stop, and you'll cut the tail of the thread off close to the bobbin. Continue winding until the bobbin is full. Now you can remove the bobbin from the winder post by pushing the post to the left and pulling the bobbin off. Cut the thread and snip the short thread flush to the side of the bobbin. Insert the threaded bobbin into the bobbin case with thread coming off the left side in a clockwise rotation. Pull the thread through the slit in the edge of the bobbin case. Continue pulling the thread under the tension plate. To test for proper tension, pull on the thread. It should feel like you have a slight amount of tension, like pulling dental floss from a container and no more. Now we'll tilt the sewing machine head back. While holding the spring-loaded lever outward, we'll push the case into the axle of the gib hook. The finger of the bobbin case should point upwards. Leave a thread tail by about four to six inches. Lower the head back into the tabletop. Now let's go over threading of your new Stitchmaster sewing machine. In the previous chapter for bobbin winding, we already placed the cone of thread on the thread stand. Now we feed it through that post like we did when we wound bobbins. This time we will not go through the bobbin tensioner, but just the pigtail as shown. Now loop the thread through these ear holes. We'll go through the first hole and the last hole and make the thread look like a candy cane stripe here. Before passing the thread through the upper tension, be sure the foot lifter is up. This releases the tension discs, as you can see. If you lower the foot and wiggle the tension discs, they are solid. They are not released. So we'll lift the presser foot, and now we can run the thread through the upper tension discs. The thread is passed through the tension discs, as seen here. Then on the left side, there's a take-up spring. Lift the thread until it catches in the slot just above the take-up spring. Pull up and down on the thread and be sure the take-up spring moves or acts just as you see here in the video. Pass it now through the take-up arm from right to left. 
Then moving it downward, we'll pass it through the needle bar thread guide hole. Now simply push the thread under the end cover, as shown here. And finally, into the needle eye from the left, coming out the right. To pick up the bobbin thread, hold the needle thread loosely to the side and rotate the Power Plus flywheel by hand towards you until the needle moves down and then back up. As the needle nears the highest point, pass a screwdriver under the presser foot from right to left to pull the thread out away from the machine. The threading is complete and it should look like you see here. After plugging in your workhorse servo motor and turning it on, we're ready for sewing. Let's practice on some scrap leather. You can sew on the sample you received or some of your own. The presser foot is raised here. We'll position our leather underneath it and lower the presser foot. The thread from the needle and the bobbin should be behind the foot as you start to sew. Those trailing threads should be held down with your finger for the first few stitches. Then they can be released. If the trailing threads are not held down for your first few stitches, you may get a rat's nest underneath the first few stitches when you lift the material up and look at the underside. Here we've reached a corner where we want to make a 90 degree turn. We want to pivot on the needle, so we'll bury the needle and come up about an eighth of an inch. Then we'll lift our presser foot, rotate our leather around, lower our presser foot, and continue to sew. Rotating on the needle gives us a good looking sharp turn, but did you know that burying the needle all the way down and then coming up about a quarter inch to an eighth inch, then making the turn ensures that the corner stitch will not be skipped. Following this technique for 90 degree turns almost always ensures that the stitch will not accidentally be skipped. When we first started sewing, we did not do any reversing to lock our stitch in place. But here, as we complete going around the entire perimeter of this scrap leather, we're going to do one or two stitches in reverse. To put the machine in reverse, we use the stitch length lever and push it all the way down. However, we are not going to go into detail about the do's and don'ts of reversing until we reach a future chapter called sewing in reverse. At this point, all we want to do is show you how to sew off a sample like this. This is the top side of our leather, and here is the bottom side of our leather. It looks great. It is extremely important for you to know that the balance wheel can only be turned towards you. As you sew under power, you can see the balance wheel spinning towards you, even when sewing in reverse. It is the same if you require to turn the balance wheel by hand. It must be rotated towards you. The Stitch Master has so much slow speed control that you may not even have to reach for the balance wheel to rotate it. In fact, if you lightly touch the foot treadle, you can accomplish moving the needle by quarter inch increments. If you must rotate it by hand, rotate it towards you. Let's show what happens if you don't. We'll rotate it the wrong way, just by about a quarter turn. And what happens? It broke the thread. The Stitch Master sewing machine comes with what's called the Easy Set Stitch Length Plate. It allows you to set stitch length in forward and in reverse to exactly what you want. Currently, our sewing machine is set up for about a 6mm stitch length. We'll release the thumb screws here and we can lower the thumb screw stop and tighten the thumb screw at whatever length we desire. We'll do the same with the lower thumb screw stop. It will determine what our stitch length is in reverse. So now you'll notice that we're sewing a much shorter stitch length. Looks like around 3 millimeters or so. We recommend setting stitch length on scrap prior to sewing on your project. By doing this, you can be assured that your forward stitch is equal to your reverse stitch length, if that's desired. So we've buried our needle at our last stitch in forward, and we'll now press down on the stitch lever to our set position in reverse. Our goal here is to sew in reverse at the same stitch length as our forward. Now we slowly sew in reverse about three to four stitches. And let's see if it's equal. Yep, it looks perfect. Looks good. Sewing in reverse is next. We've already done some reversing, but in this chapter we want to go into more detail about how to sew in reverse. 
So here we're sewing some leather in forward and we push the stitch link lever down and we're sewing in reverse. Here under power without stopping you can move from forward to reverse without having to worry about doing anything different. However, switching from forward to reverse in a stopped position is a little bit different. Let's say we want to reverse at a specific point. So obviously we want to sew slowly to that point and typically we would stop at that point. Leather sewing requires exacting details, so we are not sewing from forward to reverse under power, but rather from a stopped position. This is the proper way to do it. Let's show this all over again and explain how to do it in detail. Here again we are sewing the latigo leather and forward. When we come to where we want to do reversing, we will slow down and bury our needle all the way down at that point. But then we'll raise the needle about an eighth inch to a quarter inch. Then we will press down on our stitch link lever to our set reverse position and slowly sew in reverse. By raising the needle at our stop position about a quarter inch to an eighth inch from our deepest down position, and then sewing in reverse, we are assured that a skip stitch will not occur. While we're discussing reversing, let's talk about a little trick. If you're sewing to a corner or a specific spot and you notice that the needle is not going to hit that mark, use the stitch link lever on that very last stitch to change the entry point of the needle. At this corner, the last stitch would have fallen off the leather but since we used the stitch length lever before the needle entered the leather, we were able to shorten the last stitch so it landed right where we wanted it. In doing this, it shortens the stitch length, but that technique does work. Removing material from under the presser foot is next. That seems like it should be really easy, but there are some things that you should know. Obviously, before removing your leather or fabric, the needle must be out of the assembly. But did you know the optimal position for the needle or the take-up arm is the uppermost position for removing the fabric or the leather? And that slightly jiggling the balance wheel back and forth allows for the thread easily to be released as you pull your leather away. So what happens when the take-up arm or needle is not near the uppermost position when you remove a sewing assembly? Well, you get an extra loop of thread from the bobbin area, and you can't remove your fabric easily from underneath the presser foot. In fact, it seems jammed up. But all you need to do is rotate the balance wheel towards you, raising the needle and the take-up arm. And the extra loop of thread in the bobbin area is released. Yeah, it's that easy. Turning corners is next. We've already touched on making 90 degree turns, but what about gradual turns? Well, as long as the sewing machine is operating, gentle curves like this can be done. You just want to make sure that the sewing machine is sewing as you turn your fabric slowly. But again, if you want to make a 90 degree turn or a very sharp turn, it's best to bury the needle and raise it about an eighth inch, lift your presser foot, Rotate the leather, lower the presser foot, and then continue to sew. What should be avoided at all costs is this. Having a needle be only slightly buried in a sewing assembly, and then trying to rotate the assembly. We are doing that exact thing here, and you can see the needle is bending back and forth as we turn the leather. Now, if we were to hit the treadle and power up the sewing machine, the needle would travel in at an angle, and it would get worse as it travels down likely hitting metal or breaking the needle. If you hear a loud bang, this may have happened to you. Or if you see shredded thread above the eye of the needle, as seen here, it may be a sign that some metal parts below have been struck and they need to be repaired or replaced. Let's inspect the two most obvious parts that may be damaged if you see shredding thread. That is, the retaining ring cap spring and the gib hook. These two black fingers hold the retaining ring in place. Move them away and the retaining ring and the gib hook will come out. The retaining ring cap spring is this thin metal piece on top with the triangular opening. If it's been damaged, you may have to replace it. And the hook is this. The point of the hook needs to be smooth as seen here. These parts are not damaged, 
but we do have some parts that show damage. This retaining ring cap spring has a damage spot from a needle strike and it catches the thread and damages the thread. That's when you see shredding of thread above the eye of the needle. This hook has also been damaged by a needle strike. It too can damage the thread causing shredding. Now the hook can be buffed out with emery cloth or a fingernail file. Just don't damage the point of the hook. However, repairing the retaining ring cap spring is a little bit more difficult. There is a spare that comes with a Stitchmaster sewing machine. Typically just remove these two set screws and reinstall the spare, or you can order more. For more detailed information about the repair or replacement of the hook or the retaining ring cap spring, refer to the guidebook that comes with each Stitchmaster sewing machine. Thread tension adjustment is next. Before sewing a project, it is always wise to test your tension in some scrap. Two layers of leather have been placed under our presser foot. We lower our presser foot, hold our trailing threads as we discussed earlier, and we'll do some sewing to see what our stitch tension looks like. The tension on the top side here looks great. And the bottom side also looks great. The knot is hidden in between the layers of leather. To show poor tensioning, we're going to release some of the upper tension. There is a lot of adjustment of this upper tension assembly knob. We're going to release the knob by six full revolutions. Now we'll place our leather under the presser foot and sew an inch at a time, tightening the tension about one full turn for every inch that we sew. What we want to do in the end is we want to show you the difference between not having enough tension, having moderate tension, and having just about the right amount of tension or maybe even too much tension at the end. So this little test by sewing an inch and then tightening the tension about one full revolution for each inch will show you exactly what it looks like when you do not have enough tension. In most situations, tension must be checked by looking at the underside of your fabric assembly or leather assembly. If there is too much tension, you may notice a knot on the top side, but for most leather sewing, that is uncommon. This will be our last inch, and I believe we are right down to the point where we started, where stitch tension was about perfect. Let's inspect our assembly now. Looking at the top side, it looks pretty good everywhere except for maybe the inch or two at the beginning. But on the underside, where we began here, it's very loose. You can see the knots on the bottom side. But here, the knots are buried, so that's about perfect tension. In general, you only want enough tension so that the knot on the bottom side is pulled into the leather assembly and no more. When sewing your sample, sew in both forward and reverse and check for tension in both. The amount of downward pressure put on the material by the presser foot is controlled by the pressure regulating thumb screw. This screw compresses the long coil spring above the presser foot. We've turned the screw clockwise to increase the downward foot pressure. For leather, sometimes having more downward pressure creates more tractor marks or foot marks on the leather. Some of these can be buffed out, but excessive pressure downwards can sometimes lead to more tractor marks. By releasing some of the pressure foot pressure, you can reduce the amount of marks that the presser foot may make in your leather, especially if it's a sensitive leather. However, if you have a dense assembly, you may need to increase the foot pressure. The guidebook that comes with the Stitchmaster sewing machine covers this topic in more detail. Please refer to it. Here you can see the first stitch where more pressure was applied made more marks in the leather, but the second stitch did not make as many. Most marks in most leather assemblies can be buffed away. We designed the presser foot bottom and the feed dog top to be gentle on leather while still having enough grip to feed leather assemblies. In the end, we believe we have accomplished both goals, a good feeding leather foot and one that would not tear up the leather surface. The Craft Tool Pro Stitchmaster sewing machine is designed to sew assemblies of up to 
5 16 inch thick. But sometimes pushing assemblies that thick under the presser foot may seem difficult. But there is a trick to getting optimal foot lift. In this portion of the video, we're going to show you how to do that. By rotating the balance wheel towards you, you can find the optimal position where the outer feet and the center foot are even and the needle is just slightly above it. Let's go over that again. Here the presser feet are down. We'll lift them up. This leather assembly does not fit well under the presser feet. But notice they are not level with each other. The center foot is higher than the outer foot. We'll rotate the balance wheel towards us until we find the optimal position where the feet are even and the needle is just slightly above the center hole. Now we can push this thick leather assembly underneath the presser feet easily. Looking at it from the front here, it looks like the feet are even, but they are not. We need to continue to rotate the balance wheel towards us until the feet are perfectly even and the needle is just slightly above the hole. Here is the optimal foot lift, right here. If you're having sewing problems, sometimes the first step is to replace the needle. A blunt tip can cause popping noises, or a bent needle can cause skip stitches. Using a slotted screwdriver, we loosen the needle screw. There's no need to remove this screw completely, just loosen it. Now you can grab the needle and pull the needle downward. This removes the needle from the needle bar. To insert a new needle, push it into the needle bar. If you view the needle bar from the left side, you'll see a hole. The needle must be inserted all the way up to the uppermost portion of that hole. By looking through that hole, you can see if the needle top is inserted all the way up. The needle needs to be installed appropriately. Here we'll tighten it down, then we'll inspect how we've installed it. There is a long groove that should face towards the left. Here a fingernail is being run up and down the long groove of the needle. On the opposite side, the scarf, which is right above the eye of the needle, must be facing directly to the right. The speed adjustment of the workhorse servo motor is next. Depending on the type of project you're sewing, you may want to change the top end speed of the machine. Typically, the Stitchmaster sewing machine is set up and sent out with a set speed of 30. To change the top end speed, press the P button. Then press the S button twice. You'll now see a flashing red dot behind the number. Continue to press the S button until the desired speed between 5 and 45 is displayed. After reaching the desired speed, press the P button. Now that speed is programmed into the workhorse servo motor. You'll still have the excellent slow speed control you've come to expect, but your top end speed is now increased. Now let's set the top end speed at the slowest it can possibly go, 5. Again, the P button was pressed, the S button was pressed twice, and then we press the S button until we reach the desired top end speed. Then we press the P button again. Now, the Stitchmaster sewing machine will only sew at the top end speed of 5, which is very, very slow as you can see. We hope you enjoy your new Craft Tool Pro Stitchmaster sewing machine. If you have questions or concerns, you may receive help at these addresses. Thanks for watching.